You are now watching Believe. Do you believe? Believe in the Arizona Cardinals. It is the Arizona Cardinals centric specific show where we talk a little bit about the Arizona Cardinals in our backyard here in the Phoenix metropolitan area. My name is Javon J. Love Adams. And with me, as always, is the one and only Ed Easy Smith. He not only played in the he played professional baseball, but also played in the National Football League. And, and he is a vested person. You always hear me say that vested. It matters if you know, if you know, if you know, you know, he is vested. So how you living, man? Man, I'm doing good. I got to share something with you real quick. I was laying up yeah, late yesterday watching 60 Minutes, and yeah. they had a piece on the kickers, you know, the role that uh, the kickers expanded and, you know, different things like that. And they showed our old uh, Morton Anderson and had the clip of us uh, kicking the winning field goal in the uh, – uh, NFC Championship game. I was like, damn, I made 60 minutes, man. I was, <laughs> I was on 60 minutes. I don't care if it was a blur and you could barely see me, but I was there. <laughs> you better start. You better uh, repurpose that and chop it up. And then when you promote yourself, it's as seen on 60 minutes. There you that's, go. That's, that's how you do it. <laughs> so this week, so now, so you're probably saying, hey, uh, this popped up in my feed. What's, what's the deal? Was it was it an accident? No, as we are now inside of the, the season here, this is going to be, of course, week one as we're getting into it. We're going to be uh, we're going to be having two podcasts a week. So it's going to be one on Monday and there's going to be one on Thursday as well. So the Monday one is kind of looking back on what happened in the most recent game. And then the Thursday one looking ahead to the to, your, to the opponent. So then you again might be asking yourself, well, then why the heck are you doing this now? Well, then since we can't look back, what we can do is try to prognosticate and guess in terms of what we think the uh, the record will be for the Arizona Cardinals. And this is going to be interesting. So I, I say this because. I already have an idea of what Ed's what Ed's uh, uh, prognostication, what his mm-hmm. what his guess is, because we did this on our on our radio show, uh, Easy Easy Sports Talk Show, featuring Javon Adams, uh, every Saturday, ten to twelve here in the Phoenix area. Uh, that's on uh, ten sixty a.m. So we're going to get into it. We'll break it down by quarter, and then kind of again give our total in terms of what we think. So it's going to be interesting how we do this. So you ready? You ready to dive in? And then uh, then after that, there's a little bit of tidbit of information that I wanted to to uh, get Ed's thoughts on. So you, without further ado, you ready? Let's go, man. Let's do it. All right. All right. So coming out the gate, coming out the gate, we have the Arizona Cardinals. They will be at home and the Chiefs will be coming into town. Uh, and, and feel free, Ed, is, of course, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's your show as well. But if you want to give what we did on our on our radio show, it's interesting that Ed came up with this uh, kind of a phrase game. So kind of a phrase or 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 a word or so that 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 that. Con- that uh, goes with the, the game or, the, or yeah. the competition that describes it. So feel free to do it if you want. But the Chiefs, I have this. So the Chiefs are coming into the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, we know about the high-powered offense of the Chiefs, even though they they have lost one of their most rep- um, potent weapons in terms of in the receiver spot after get after the trade there. But I have a loss for the Arizona Cardinals uh, coming out the gate. Even though I think it for the most part, I think f- what the Arizona Cardinals that there won't be a lot of. Uh, won't be a lot of blowouts when it comes to their victories, but uh, for the when they're those wins, I think it'll they'll be for the most part kind of coming down to the you know within seven to ten points is probably how a lot of that stuff will play out. But what do you have for this uh, to, for the for week one? My fave my phase uh, phrase for this game, Jay, was the sluggish birds fall prey to the mighty chiefs, and I'm referencing the fact that we had no preseason action for many of our starters. Um, I think it'll come out of the block and stumble a little bit. Against the Chiefs team, as you know, they played Mahomes and starters two games worth of action. I just think they're going to be more finely tuned, and obviously it's already a potent offense they have, even minus uh, Tyreek Hill. But I just think they come in and a little more finely tuned. I think you can expect a lot of penalties from the Cardinals, holding and things of that nature with the offensive line not working together, and then uh, procedure calls and different things because they're just – like I said, it's going to be like preseason for them. So I got the Chiefs winning this one. Uh, Cardinals 0-1 after the first game. So what's interesting is that you mentioned that, and we talked about it, I believe, last week as well on here, I believe, in the Arizona Cardinals, but uh, also on the show where you think that that first, and, and I think it's it's a good way to, to approach it, that first four weeks for not only the Arizona Cardinals, but for most teams, it's almost going to be like preseason in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, getting used to everything, even – you know, the pursuit coming out of the in the second half. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to simulate that. Stuff, you say you know? that you, Trace McSorley, he knows how to do it. If he happens to be the one playing in the game, he's going to be well prepared. 
<laughs> and I know this is, you know, you, you know, it's something. Obviously, it's not their first rodeo, but it's getting back into the flow of things. It's right. getting reacclimated to one, the punishment of the game, and then the, you know, then all the procedures, everything you have to do, including going in after a half, quick twenty minute turnaround. And you're going back out to fire it up again. These Cardinals have not done it since J- January of this year. So it's going to be interesting. And there's a laundry list of players, and you recounted it again on uh, Easy Sports Talk, that had not played during the, during the preseason. So now we go into week two. So we're hitting the road, going to Las Vegas, going to Sin City, and the Arizona Cardinals will be going up against my Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, I got the Cardinals, and I the the phrase that I came up with this one was "Remember Me," uh, kind of the uh, a, a nod to the Eminem song from his second album. And because Chandler Jones, they'll be they'll be going up against their their former teammate Chandler Jones. But having said that, I think the Arizona Cardinals will come out with the W partially because I'm still kind of on the I don't know what the first how that first quarter of the season will come out for the the Las Vegas Raiders. I do think that they'll end up making the playoffs, but I think it might be a little shaky to, to start out with as they get used to their new coach and, and kind of some of those moving parts there. What'd you what'd you think on this one? Cardinals crap out in Vegas. And I've got – this is a get-back game for Chandler Jones. And I referenced yesterday or the other day on our show, he had five sacks in the Tennessee game to open up last year. He might have <laughs> ten in this game, bro, because he's going to want to get back. And I think our offensive line, they've got a couple of guys on that defensive front, along with picking up Devontae Adams on the offensive side. you got Waller to deal with. We're still going to be trying to figure it out. I think the Raiders do uh, enough uh, to have us on our heels – most of that game uh, after two games, I have the Cardinals 0-2. Um, All right, so so going into to week three, the Arizona Cardinals will be going up against this team. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They'll be coming here to uh, State Farm Stadium, the uh, Los Angeles Rams, the reigning Super Bowl champions. And so – the, with this one, I wrote "bully time" was my was what I came up with because for the most part, except for that, maybe it's the outlier of what happened last season during the regular season where the Arizona Cardinals were victorious against the Rams. For the most part, it, it's been it's it hasn't been any type of rivalry that's been going on there. So I do have "bully time" and I have the Cardinals losing to the to the Los Angeles Rams. What say you? Anybody who's seen the movie Friday. You know about big old Debo running the streets over there. And my quote was, what you got on my 40, Craig? And I think this is one of those games, just like you talk about bully. I think their offensive or our offensive line is going to have fits against uh, Aaron Donald and that defensive front. They got Bobby Wagner now. Uh, You got the backside uh, covered with Jalen Ramsey. I just think too much Rams, uh, you know, and, and we always look for that Super Bowl hangover. But, man, they, they just still look, in my opinion, very impressive. And they had this kind of the same approach during the uh, preseason. Not a lot of whole action for those guys, but I just think they're more talented on both uh, defense and offensive fronts. And, unfortunately, Cardinals, in my opinion, will be 0-3 after this, uh, after this week. All right, so then we go in. the The Cardinals will will head out on the road. They will go to uh, to the Carolina Panthers, and it will be. And you mentioned this. I'll let you kind of give that stat there. But it'll be Baker Mayfield against uh, Kyler Murray. They both play for for uh, uh, for University of Oklahoma, and so I had OKC. As in kind of an interesting way in which how how does this play out? Because Baker Mayfield, I don't think that Baker Mayfield is as terrible as some talking heads make it out to be. I mean, I think he's he's it, it takes talent to be able to take a team that was before you came to the to this team was one in 15. And then so you came and then you start you got them to a point where they and of course, their moves that a team makes is are are very uh, are very important as well. But you got them to the playoffs, and so you know you were just banged up last season. But I I think when it comes to this one, I think that the Cardinals will be victorious when heading to Carolina. What say you? Heisman on Heisman crime. Obviously, uh, the both <laughs> of them went back to, uh, back as far as Heisman's at Oklahoma. Mayfield won it in 2017. Kyle Murray came back and uh, came over 2018, won the Heisman. I just think our Heisman winner is better than theirs. And, I, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough game, though, especially right. the problem with the Panthers is McCaffrey's never available. It seems. <laughs> ever, he's ever, ten, ever, yeah, ever. He's played 10 games in the last two years, something of that, you know, effect. If he is healthy, 
they give people fits, and especially you know Mayfield, he's he's a adequate quarterback. I don't call him you know one of the best out there, but that could be a tough game, especially on the road. But I do think we get the victory here, our first one of the season. All right. So after four weeks, quarter quarter mark, we know that there are eighteen weeks in the season now. We know, but anyway, so I have two and two. For the for the Arizona Cardinals, and you have one and three, right? Yes, you're being generous. Go ahead. And, and you know, I showed you my paper on the yeah. on the show on Saturday, and one of those, which was the the Las Vegas Raiders game, I had it as I I, I marked out an L and put in a W, so I could have it as as uh, as one and three as well, but I have it as two and two. So let's start to get into the the, the second quarter of the season. So the Arizona Cardinals will be welcoming the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles to State Farm Stadium. I have as this i have show me what you got which is a a, again a nod to the to the jay-z song of the same name and i have the arizona cardinals coming out with a loss because i do think that if and you mentioned this on the show is that there are a lot of similarities almost in between the the eagles and the cardinals not just the fact that they're, they're both birds but but it's I think that the 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 Eagles are a little bit further along in terms of how they're building the team around their quarterback and some of the decisions that they made in the draft recently. So I do have that as a loss for the Arizona Cardinals. What say you? I, my phrase was like looking in the mirror exactly for the reason you just mentioned. The Eagles are kind of constructing this team around a very athletic, uh, not proven quarterback like Murray. I do think Murray's an upgrade from Hurts, from Jalen Hurts, but – very similar in build and, and athleticism. Murray throws a much better ball, but they put some talent around Hurts. I think this team is going to be very viable for the playoffs and even winning that division, the NFC East. But I do think coming over here, uh, we'll, we'll get them in a very tight game. But I think the Cardinals come out on top of this one to, to take them to two and three. You have them falling to two and three. So at the same, uh, you know, we, we got the same record, just getting there in different ways. All right, so then we go into, let's see, what do we have coming up next? Ah, the Seahawks. It's all about these birds right now, man. So we are going to Seattle. And so what I had for, for, my, uh, for my phrase was RIP to the 12s. And the reason I say that is because this is this is definitely going to be a down year when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the Seattle Seahawks because I really don't think that they care about the the quarterback position right now and it's almost like the the chickens coming home to roost in a lot of ways because of the, how they have not paid attention to some of those key positions such as offensive line for example but I do have the Cardinals winning this one what say you the legion of gloom not the legion of boom anymore and the twelfth man can't help you now it's, a, it's an incredibly tough place to play but you know, as you mentioned, you know, you got either Geno Smith or Drew Locke leading that uh, quarterback room right now. And, you know, minus Russell Wilson. This is one of those games where it's going to, I think in this, it's a tight game. But I think we this is one of those games, even though it's on the road, you should blow these Seahawks out because they don't match up with us. And it's incredible what they've done in terms of this organization, how the mighty have fallen, you know, just a few years ago. Super Bowl contenders every year all of a sudden to maybe play them for a first-round quarterback next year. So this one, the next coming up is uh, against the Saints. So the the Cardinals will be welcoming the Saints here into to State Farm Stadium, and it's a short week if I'm not mistaken. So it's a short week, and uh, and so for this one, I had front line time. So if you've ever heard about the things that go on there uh, in in uh, in New Orleans, so the front line is you can you can hire a, a band, a, a brass section to kind of follow you around and and, and really have that music. It's almost like uh, having your own theme. Music. Music that follows you around. So I said, uh, front line time. And so I think the Cardinals will be will come out victorious against the Saints. Ed, what you got? I got the short week, as you mentioned, Jameis Winston. Uh, we not all know his propensity to give the ball away every now and then. I went with Jameis, Jameis taketh, Jameis giveth away. And on a short week, you know, coming out here, uh, that's Thursday night football. I could see Jameis tossing us a couple, uh, tight game, but he could toss us a couple, Buda Baker. Somebody picking one up and going the other way, we end up winning that game uh, to bring us to four and three. So we got a winning record at this time of the season. 
All right, and so let's move on to we have the the Vikings. The Cardinals will be taking on the Vikings, and they will be traveling to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. That and they are, will be playing your nephew. And so you know, I'm sure that you drafted them on your you know <laughs> fantasy football league and all that type of stuff. And so I have speed kills because Justin Jefferson uh, out there uh, as a wide receiver, uh, among other things, and then of course we have what uh, Cook as well. So I have the Cardinals taking a loss. So uh, what say you? I got the same thing, man. Anybody who follows Minnesota uh, football, they have the Skull Champ, S-K-O-L. And it's you talk about intimidating, bro. I've been there as a player and I've been there as a fan to watch my nephew play. And that whole place lights up. It's like Skull, Skull. So my I went with the my uh, phrase was Skull Crushing. I think the uh, <laughs> Minnesota new offensive-minded coach, the OC from uh, the Rams comes out there. Uh, you you know you got all those weapons. Cook running the ball. Jefferson, my nephew, running around out there. Maybe they get the best out of Kirk, uh, D Cousins, and you know this could be a, a little bit of a beat down up there. Uh, but yeah, I haven't called it. Cardinals falling back to even at four and four after a loss in Minnesota. So after eight weeks, I have the Cardinals at four and four, and you have the Cardinals. Uh, what record do you have for the Arizona Cardinals? Four and four. We're right there. We, like I said, we're just taking different roads to get there. All right. Here's where, here's where we take a fork, though. I think yes. next year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So to, to start off the, uh, the 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 next quarter of the season, we have the Arizona Cardinals will be facing again the, uh, the Seahawks. This time the Seahawks will be coming to State Farm Stadium. And then I have this time I have Say My Name. This is one of those almost like that you, you, you're, you're so used to you want to beat up on your 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 rival so bad. Say my name when you when you're taking it to them when they've when they've inflicted so much pain on you over the years. So I have the Arizona Cardinals coming out on top of the Seattle Seahawks and you easy. This is one of those ones is a must win at home. You got the a, a Seattle team. Like I said, no firepower coming here. I went with roadkill. You know, you're driving, you see them birds dead on the road all the time. This is a Seahawk should be, uh, you know, dead man walking. We should beat up on these boys. And I will throw this out at you, Jay. After mm-hmm. this game, that's the week that Hard Knocks comes into the building. After this game, so Man. the filming starts, and from here on out, the rest of the way, lights, cameras, action. Now I will pause and take a, a slight, uh, slight aside here. You ever seen? You've been in the. We've been in those office situations before, where the the manager is less than less than stellar he he doesn't display all the skills of a good manager but then when somebody from corporate comes or maybe the director comes in all of a sudden he want that he or she wants to act as though they they have their team under under control but it always seems to fall it always seems to fall apart because they've never shown that on a consistent basis and then the upper management is looking and saying what's going on here and i wonder and i said this on the show i wonder if 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 Cliff doesn't have things buttoned up as as he makes it seem to be, or as or maybe some fans think that he does, and you get into a hard knock situation, and it's and it looks like there are a lot of gaps in leadership. I don't, I wonder how that would bode well. But he just signed an extension, so you know I don't know what they can really do instead of eat that contract if they decide if things fall apart at the end of the season again. They've locked in until twenty seven with him. And with Kaim, and for me, it's disturbing because we're actually going to see how the food is actually prepared in the kitchen here, <laughs> per se. And, bro, you know, sometimes you can see chaos and it can be covered up. In this instance, we're going to see, I think, a little bit of chaos. And my question I threw out even on the show on Saturday was, at this point in time, because this team is now, you give Kyler the money, you got extensions for everybody, like, Oprah giving TVs to everybody in the audience. <laughs> now the expectations go up, and say we are sitting here at five and four, uh, you know, even for heaven forbid, four and five, something like that. How restless the fans, the media are going to get. How that starts to bleed into our uh, young quarterback's mind. The, the 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 head coaches maybe feeling it. We could get a real s- true sense, like I said, with this. Uh, now hard knocks coming. We can get a true sense of really what's going on, and it might not look as pretty as some people would like to like it to look. All right, all right. So let's go into the next game. So we have a, and, and it's interesting. You had mentioned this uh, on the show on Saturday that we've already by week nine, at the end of week nine, we've already got the 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 uh, the Rams out of the way. But we're in now as we get into week ten. Who else do we have out of the way? We have the uh, 
Um, so we already have the Seahawks out of the way. And now by yeah. week 10, we have the Rams that are going to be out of the way now. And that's on the November 13th where the uh, the Arizona Cardinals will be heading in to going to L.A. And so for this one, I had second verse, same as the first. I think that the, the L.A. Rams will be victorious again. So I have this as another loss for the Arizona Cardinals. What say you? I'm going back to the movie Friday. Lebo, that's my bike pump. I mean, that's another, I think it's another beat down. Uh, on the road, this one might be a repeat of, you know, January, whatever that first uh, playoff game was for us against them. You know, they might be rolling. We might be reeling. And it might show uh, going into this game. And at this point, Jay, I have um, – well, I'll, I'll just say another loss. We can get to the records after the 12th game against, you know, Chargers or, or whichever one. But, yeah, just another beatdown, manhandling by the Rams in this instance. Uh Things are getting a little touchy because now the cameras are are watching us too. All right, all right. So let's go into so we have the next one up on the schedule here. Uh, we got the 49ers. And so again, keep in mind that week eleven is when we see the 49ers for the first time, which again is just interesting. So on the Weird. 21st, and so the they will be coming to State Farm Stadium. And for this one, I had oh, go ahead. This one is actually in Mexico City. Oh, yes, this thank is you. Monday night football. In Mexico City, so it's a home game for us. Yes, but it's yes. not really a home game. So, Thank you. Yeah, yep. that's my man. That's my partner right there. So uh, I have this one. Jimmy want more, and that's uh, if you watch <laughs> Dream Girls, and so Eddie Murphy's character. So there's a part where he's where his character is starting to kind of spiral out of control, and he, Jimmy want more. Jimmy want more. This is when I think that by this time of the season, that Jimmy Garoppolo will be whether it's for a short period or maybe for the rest of the season that he will be uh, inserted into the starting lineup because of maybe some challenges or some growing pains when it comes to when it comes to Trey. So I do have the Arizona. Cardinals Cardinals losing to the 49ers in this game. And you? This is a tricky one for me because this is 11 weeks into the season. We know that Jimmy Garoppolo is still on the roster. They have the, uh, uh, the the plan to move forward with Trey Lance. But at this point in the season, I went, time to put your Jimmy hat on? Oh, I mean, time for you to put your hat on, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. So that means oh, Lord. if we get to this point, are the because this is a San Francisco team that is built and ready to go back to the playoffs and beyond. We've seen what they've done with Garoppolo. Uh, Super Bowl appearance last year, they went to Dallas, won, ended up losing to the eventual. Uh, no, no, they won in Green Bay as well, right? Got mm -hmm. to the NFC Championship game and finally fell to the eventual Super Bowl champions. I'm not sure if they're going to let Trey Lance run this team. And run it into the ground, meaning, okay, rookie, you, or not rookie, but second year, you need to pick this up. And if he isn't, by this time of the season, Jimmy, you, I said the other day on the show, when you go into schools and you see that break glass in case of emergency, that's what Jimmy is. So I'm wondering, by this time of the season, have they broken that glass and gotten Jimmy back in lineup? If they, Either way, I'm going to go with the Cardinals in this game, mm -hmm. but this is going to be one of those – I'm not quite sure, but yeah, we'll see whether Jimmy's in the lineup by that point, but I do have the Cardinals winning this one. All right. So then we come into, I, we got the, we got the Chargers coming to, uh, to State Farm Stadium. I have, as my phrase, overrated because there's so many people that are going, that are jumping on board with, with, uh, with Herbert. And I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback at all, but I just wonder if if all that praise is a tad bit early. And so as a result, of course, is the so with with 90% of the teams in the in the National Football League, if the quarterback is super talented, then then that raises the level of expectations for the team as a whole. And so I think that's why there's so many people that are on board with the Chargers. But so I have the Chargers um losing. So I have the Arizona Cardinals victorious when it comes to the Chargers here. And Ed, what you got? I got struck by lightning. I uh, wouldn't be a shocker to see the lightning bolts come in here and zap them birds. And I told you the other day, it's funny how you go to the hood and you see all those birds up there on the wires looking all safe and everything. And you always <laughs> wonder to yourself, you always wonder to yourself, how the hell are they not up there just frying, you're getting shocked. But somehow, whatever, they're grounded, I guess, or something. In this instance, I do think, I, and I'll throw this out at you, Jay. I'm yeah. with you as far as the, it seems like there's so much hype around Herbert. Even just today, I heard some ESPN talking heads. There, he is a, a. They're saying he could be a potential MVP candidate this year, and I'm like, he didn't even miss the make the playoffs last year. My yeah. my my concern is their head coach. He is really 
not really good with time management, timeouts, and those risky fourth downs. He could cost them a game or two during the season. In this one, though, I do think they come over and uh, end up beating us uh, in, at the at our, on the, our home field this year, though. So then next up is the bye, week 13. Now, you give me your good and bad. How do you feel if you were playing when week 13 is when you have the bye? What would your thought be as a player? Well, I put on my phrase, what, you, what took you so long to get here? Yeah. I mean, it, and here's, let's throw this out at you too, Jay. Remember, you brought this point up the other day. The fact that you're 12 weeks in, getting ready to play the Chargers. Next week, your buy is finally coming. Chargers, yeah. kid, the, the Cardinals might be looking ahead to that buy because it has been a long stretch to get here. That is, you know, you, you, you draw the short stick when you have a buy in week 13. I'd much rather have it around week seven, eight, something like that, uh, and not wait till 13. It's just a long 12 weeks uh, prior to this, and the wear and tear will be evident. you got the cameras all around as well. But, yeah, this is just a late, such a late bye week. Uh, but, I mean, you'll take them when, when you get them, when you have to. But I guarantee a lot of guys are going to be looking forward to that uh, week off. I will. I, I must give credit where credit is due. That was our radio producer, Aaron Decker, that pointed that one out. Because okay. he because he changed his prediction based uh, yeah, upon looking right. at it and saying, well, maybe that maybe the Cardinals will be looking ahead to that bye week. So it's going to be interesting there. So next coming in is a man that has all the respect in the world is, is Bill Belichick with his Patriot crew. And for <laughs> this one, I had. Things done change, and that is uh, that is a nod to the to the nor- notorious B.I.G. song where he sampled uh, Dr. Dre. Things done changed, and because they they're going through, I think they'll be going through some challenges in that transition to try to get back to where they were, which is difficult given the heights of where they were with with Tom Brady. But I do have the Cardinals coming out with a victory over the Patriots and you. Well, you think about this, Jay. The Patriots own that division for so long. And now you've got a case you could almost prove, uh, say that they might be the third best team in their, in their own division, let alone the AFC. Uh, I went with the Patriots. It's the be- it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And now, yeah. you know, we've got the Bills that look like they're in it for the long haul, might start making those runs like the Patriots did all those years ago with their talented quarterback. You got the Dolphins stocking up like you can't even imagine, trying to put out everything they can, everything they can around Tua. That could be a fight for the Patriots. Patriots are not the the, the Patriots of old. Uh, without Brady, post Brady era is not going to be looking good. Arthur or Kraft is going to get very uh, impatient over there. But I think they come in here and take a little bit of a beat down from us, uh, which is odd to say because they yeah. were so good for so long, but not the same Patriots uh, that we are used to. Indeed, indeed. I wake up in the morning sometimes when it's when my body's feeling all sore and I say I'm not the same Jay as I was five or six years ago. Good Lord. So now after this third quarter of the season, I have the Cardinals as seven and six. What do you have? I'm right there. We're still on the same road, seven and six. <laughs> I, got, I got a feeling from what I know. We can already go in opposite directions. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so here we go. The last quarter of the season, we start out with, and let me get back to this we start out with the Broncos. We're going to be traveling to Mile High City, and so going to see uh, Russell Wilson and the Broncos. And I have a loss for the Cardinals, and my my phrase was chef's kiss because you always hear about let Russ cook, let Russ cook. And I think uh, that Russell Wilson will be able to, especially when you think – if you've never – either been in that high if you're here in here in Arizona we're here in Phoenix it we're we're you know a lower elevation you travel up a couple of hours you go to Flagstaff and you have that definite change is what 7000 plus uh 7000 plus in terms of the elevation and if you if you're running if you're hiking if you're biking that type of stuff you can definitely feel it in your lungs and so it's going to be interesting to see how they prepare going into that week but I do have the Cardinals falling to the Denver Broncos you I got Russell cooking in the Mile High City and we just, you know, we threw this news out as old news now, but uh, Wilson just signed that five-year extension. He's going to keep him there an additional five after the two he had left on his contract. So the Broncos feel like they've found their franchise quarterback post Peyton Manning. Um, and I do think that he's going to fit in well up there. I think it's a, you know, I do know it's a tough place to go up and play, not just not just the uh, elevation, but the the fans and the rabid, rabid, ravidness of that, uh, you know, uh, back, the backing they get. Cardinals go up there, they put up a good fight, but I don't see them coming out of there 
for the victory. I see the uh, Cardinals losing to the Broncos. All right, so now it's interesting. Here's where here's where the the two shall the two shall not meet. Mm-hmm. So the Buccaneers come to uh, State Farm Stadium on Christmas Day. I put here. I put bucking them down, and that's because that's a, that's my that's my cheesy reference to an LL Cool J song from one of his albums called "Bucking Them Down." And I think that the the Bucks will be going through a lot of struggles. I'm not going to say that they're going to be terrible in terms of record wise, but I think given that some of the issues that they have already on the offensive line with some of those injuries, I do think, and maybe even I think it's. It's hard to compartmentalize when you're, it doesn't matter if you're working in an office or if you're working on a team, if you have those personal things that might be going on, uh, it's it's tough to maybe focus. And so if so, some of the rumors are true, it might be tough for, for Tom Brady to focus a little bit there. And I do, I find that the Arizona Cardinals will be victorious, I say, wow. against the, against the Bucks. and easy what you got. I'm going to reference the movie, The Last Dragon. Who's the master? <laughs> Show enough. And I just <laughs> Brady is the GOAT. And I know he's going through some stuff right now, but if anybody can compartmentalize it and get back into focus and make sure everybody around him is just as focused. And especially if this is his last rodeo, I think he's going through some stuff, obviously. But once he committed, he had to get some things taken care of. I got no problem with him taking those 11 days off. I definitely think he's going to be ready to go. Like I said, because he's not going to want to go out, uh, you know, looking bad. I think he's going to put his best foot forward to you beat the man. You can't beat a man. I think he's going to come in here and uh, Bronco, the Buccaneers getting positioned for the playoffs, whether it's a two seed, a one seed, three, whatever. They're going to be uh, flying, uh, coming in here to get that victory, and I think they do. All right. And then we have the Cardinals will be going to – to ATL to play the the Falcons. For this one, I was trying to come up with a cool Dungeon Family reference. If for those in the hip hop world, I just couldn't come up with one that sounded good enough. So so on uh, so on New Year's Day, I think the Cardinals will be victorious over the the Falcons. The, I think the Falcons they they may even have their their rookie quarterback in by this time. I don't think that um, that Marcus Mariota is long for for the Falcons because they were even trying to go after uh, Deshaun Watson uh, when they when everybody was trying to court him. So I do think that the Arizona Cardinals will be victorious over the Falcons. What say you on New Year's Day? Easy. Birds of a feather flock together. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm not saying we're identical to the, what the Falcons might be because they're going to be struggling They're Like you said, they might have their young quarterback in by then, uh, you know, not a very good team, uh, pro- probably a very bad losing record. We're floating around 500 in my opinion. We do go over there and get the victory, but we're both coming down the stretches of disappointing seasons, more so for us, because I think our aspirations are playoffs and a beyond, whereas the Falcons know what this season is for them. But like I said, very uh, uh, long season for both of these teams. We do get the victory now. All right, so the final the final game of the season wraps up with the 49ers uh, heading to the Bay Area, Bay Area to, to uh, round out the season. I do, for this one, I came up with Last Laugh. That is uh, an homage to one of my songs. And, that, and I think that the Cardinals will be victorious in this one. And so in the season with the victory, easy what you got. I got, are we there yet? Meaning we, this has been a very disappointing season. Where last we all know we had our young quarterback who didn't want to finish a playoff game last year, let alone <laughs> we might be out of the playoff hunt, maybe fighting for a spot, but more likely out of the playoff picture. And if we are, this last game is going to be Kyler Murray sitting on the sideline watching uh, either McSorley or um, uh, who, uh, who's our backup. Or uh, uh, why am I? What? Yeah, both yeah. ranking. But right, our right. backup quarterback getting a little action to finish out the season. Colt and McCoy. I think Colt McCoy, there you go. And I do think the 49ers out in San Fran uh, win this one, uh, closing our season out. And we're, uh, you know, like I said, we're done and finished uh, on a, a flat note, in my opinion. Okay. All right. So I have, drum roll, please. I have the Cardinals at 10 and 7 based upon this. And you have. I have the Cardinals at 8 and 9. And why don't you tell everybody about our, our bet on the season, too? 
All right, so I gotta say, because <laughs> shout out to Bet Online, the the line for over under for victories is eight and a half for the Cardinals. But Ed says, nah, he he got his own betting uh, betting situation set up. So we got a bet on if if the Cardinals win, it was at nine plus nine and a half, nine and a half. So if the Cardinals over win, under. this is a terrible. I, sh- I shouldn't have taken that that hook on it. But <laughs> uh, so if they so nine and a half, then then. Uh, then I win, and then if uh, and then if I lose, then I have to get Ed a uh, libation of his choice within reason. We, we set a dollar amount. We set on a it. dollar on it. And then his uh, and his his young son was in the room as well, so he'll get a little something as well. So you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm pulling for it, but I, I do think that there's that's the that's the ceiling for me, and then the floor would be maybe like you have it at eight, maybe even seven wins. I think that they're especially early on in the season as as teams are trying to find their way. I think there's that opportunity to maybe take a victory here or there depending on how because there's always that team that steps up and does better than you think and then there are those that that through injury or whatever it is that they underperform and if you catch those teams at the right moment then you can come out on top and we all know how it goes jay they're going to win a game that we're, we'll be scratching our head trying to figure out how they pull that off and it always works out where it balances itself out sometime where they'll lose one and we're like, how the heck did they lose that game? So that's that's the ebb and flow of the season. Obviously, we're just you know throwing our prognostication out there. But you know, I'm unfortunately I do feel this is going to be a little bit of a step back. And just to even clarify, Mitch had them winning 11 games. So there are some fans and people out here, supporters that think you know they're going to be fine and dandy, take the next steps up. Now I'll ask you this uh, as a kind of a closing question. With your record of ten and seven, do you think they make it into the playoffs? Do they get a wild card spot? Yes. Okay. If 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 they perform that way, and it's funny because going in when I, before looking at the schedule and, and performing that uh, performing performing that exercise, I thought that I would have it as lower, fewer wins than, than I thought. And then again, just trying to look at it. And and again, the, the season, it's a dynamic thing. So it's not a static thing. It, it kind of ebbs and flows as you go. But what's going to happen is the same thing that happens with every team is that you lose a couple people, you know, fan base gets upset. And then the expectations drop. You, you, as you mentioned, you win one or two that you shouldn't have won. And now the expectations rise. And there, so you have to, how do you manage that? That's going to be key, but it's just going to be interesting. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious to see how we manage if there is non-success, meaning if we lose a couple even right out of the box, how quickly fans either jump off the bandwagon and start with the chatter chatter or they get behind this team and try to help them rally. You know, out here yeah. in the valley it's a little different. You know, yeah. we 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 tend to, uh, to to follow the leader and sometimes we don't back our teams that might be scuffling a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I do hope, and I'm, I'm never one that's in with blind faith, but I do think there is something to be said about a team that doesn't, about a fan base, not a team, but a fan base that doesn't jump off the bandwagon because you lose a couple of games. I mean, yeah. goodness gracious, that's ridiculous. And and I think it's it's a matter of trying to show that support. It's, it's there's that That's a whole other topic in and of itself. But believe in the Arizona Cardinals, so I want to leave with this. I came across an article on Arizona Sports, so you go to ArizonaSports.com, and it's an article by Tyler Drake in, in the uh, in their Cardinals corner section. And so they were talking about the safety, the uh, breaking down. So what he did was he broke down the strongest position groups from the strongest to the weakest. And I just wanted your, your start, thought on this. And again, this is by Tyler Drake. So the strongest position group that he had, I'm just going to start from, the, from number one and go to the bottom and you stop me wherever you choose. Safety at number one, number two, qu- quarterback, Number three, tight end. I mean, if they keep drafting all kinds of tight ends instead of working on the offensive line. Uh, Wide receiver at number four. Let's see. We have running back at number five. You know they got five running backs? Uh, Hopefully hopefully, hopefully you're getting a lot of special teams out of of three, four, and five. Otherwise, otherwise, what, what the heck are you doing? Yeah, indeed. So number five will be running back, and this is going from strongest to weakest. Number six, inside linebacker. Uh, number seven, offensive line. Can I stop you there, Jay? All right. I was waiting. I was waiting, man. What's up? And then the last, last of special um, teams, but go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, the weakest, your, your, your second to weakest unit on the whole team is your offensive line. Well, let's say your seventh, they're ranking them seventh. Jay, that's a, if that's not a recipe for disaster, I don't know what is. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at some of the great. The first thing they talk about with the good and great teams yeah. is up front. They, I mean, they protect their quarterback. Uh, right. They got a great offensive unit. And when they lose one, they usually have somebody able to step up in that unit and be a, fill, a great fill. I don't even know who are. Right now, Jay, can you tell me for 100% sure what our starting five offensive linemen are going to be? We don't – you have no idea. One, because they didn't play at all during the offseason or the training, training camp or yeah. preseason. And it's almost like – I mean, it's such a I know Humph group. Humphreys and Hudson should be in there. Okay. That's two. I mean, That's 40% full. Okay. I guess that, <laughs> hey, I'm just saying if if that if your offensive line is that far down on your list of assets, meaning the best group, that's not a, a recipe for success, Woo. if you ask me. Making me regret some of my, my pr predictions there. Number eight, special teams. Number nine, outside linebacker. Number 10, defensive line. Uh, number 11, cornerback. Oh, boy. Now, that, that cornerback, I agree with that cornerback. And think about the defensive line and the cornerback. What is going to – so they're, they're going to get picked on, especially that first game. Again, if you right. catch the teams, you it's you hear about this in a lot of – in in uh, not only professional football but also college football. You hear about it. Yeah, for, yeah, that's for the most part. Catch them early instead of, instead of when you catch them late so that, that way they're not in their groove. So some of those high octane, those those teams that are supposed to be have that high octane, they have to find their way, find their rhythm. That's why it may be good to catch some of these teams that are supposed to be high octane a little bit earlier in the season, if nothing else, because they they're gonna try to pick on you as the season gets into gets into form. There. Think about the first three quarterbacks we face, Jay, Mahomes, yeah. your boy out in uh, Car Vegas, Car, and then you got Super Bowl winning Stafford. I yeah. mean, that's right out the box. You know, quarterbacks not that just are talented, super talented, but know how to manipulate a coverage and read it and, you know, whatever you try to throw at them. My, one of my fears, Jay, is because our back end is so bad, I think we're going to take risks. Dance, we're going to try to take risks to get at the quarterback, and all that does is expose you even more for the big plays. That's a lot so of blitz. Would you think like more blitzes? blitzes? Yeah. And, yeah. And especially because we don't have a dominant edge or anything like that. You can Ooh. double team Watt. We don't have a Chandler Jones anymore. Uh, we got these guys that aren't going to be able to get what you call great pressure. So what do you have to do? You have to create pressure, right? Yeah. And that means that means turn around and, and dropping your trousers, man, because you're going to be fully exposed on the backside. There's a and, lot of people that are going to be a lot of expectations that comes from from the from the edge with the with the the rookies that are coming out as well. What, I know you start to smile. You start to smile. <laughs> go ahead. Go what ahead. have I always told you too, Jay? Remember. When you talk about your best group is your safeties, right? Yeah. If Buda Baker is making 30 tackles a game, but they're yes. all 25 yards up the field mm. or, you know, after the first down marker, I yeah. mean, what good is that? I mean, we should be so good up front. Not, I mean, now, it's good to be great on the back end, right. but I'd much rather be tight up front with that offensive and defensive line. So it's going to be a true chore to, uh, to, to, to protect our quarterback on our side and get after the quarterback on the other side and do it without having to throw everything but the kitchen sink at her. Yeah, you get those fire blitzes or you start to put a lot of pressure in and you have that those delays that quarterback drops off and then dumps it to the dumps it to the running back to to be able to take advantage of that over aggression. Or how about the dreaded tight end? Kelsey might come in and have 15 catches uh, first game of the season. Man. All right. So on behalf of the one and only Ed Easy Smith, hope you enjoyed the way in which we with which we approach uh, kind of guessing the 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 the, the season record. But uh, we'll be back again in a couple of days. So on behalf of the one and only Ed Easy Smith, we are presented by Bet Online. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about what we got going on, and look for us. You know whether it's on Believe dot com, uh, wherever you find your your podcast, go to Sirius XM, get on the app wherever you find your podcast believe in the arizona cardinals that's b-l-e-a-v you can also go to easy and you can find it on the tab there so as we always like to say around this time are you kidding